Anyhow, I've been promising you uh, for a couple of days the story, the true history of the Libertarian Party. And I want to share this with you. I think it's, it's interesting that the New York Times and other publications are talking about libertarian, excuse me, populism. And they talk about Rand Paul, and they talk about these libertarians and Ron Paul. and They know such thing. Populism is of, by, and for the people, right? It's, it's a politician who's speaking about the folks. Back in, in 1950, there were hearings in the U.S. Congress literally in the year 1950, that exposed both Milton Friedman and this organization called FEE, F-E-E, the Foundation for Economic Education, which is the, the founding organization, the very first libertarian think tank. Milton Friedman was a business lobby shill. He worked for whoever would pay him the most money. And the the... The uh, committee was called the Buchanan Committee because it was put together by uh, the pro-labor Democrat from Pennsylvania, Frank Buchanan. And what they found was that back in 1946, the real estate lobby had a problem. And that was something called rent controls. They did not like rent control. So they funded, or excuse me, they found this, this lobbying outfit, the Foundation for Economic Education, which was a, it itself, it, it was a big business PR project. I'm, I'm getting a lot of this, by the way, in occasionally words or phrases from Mark Ames in his piece published most recently on Alternet uh, about the history of the Libertarian Party. The Foundation for Economic Education was put together by GM, Chrysler, Ford, U.S. Steel, National Steel, Republic Steel, the Gulf Oil, Standard Oil, Sun Oil, DuPont, Monsanto, Con Ed, B.F. Goodrich, Eli Lilly, Merrill Lynch, General Electric, and other Fortune 500 companies. They put together the Foundation for Economic Education, the first libertarian think tank, and they invented the word libertarianism invented this in 1946 right after the war was over the foundation for economic education there uh, it was it was headed up by a fellow by the name of Leonard Reed who was an executive with the US Chamber of Commerce and a fellow by the name of Donaldson Brown who was the a director of the National Association of Manufacturers a lobby group, and a board member on both DuPont and General Motors. Now, consider this. Also on the board of directors of FEE at that time was Robert Welch, who, if you're not of a certain age, you may not recognize that name. I do. He's the guy who founded the John Birch Society. And J. Reuben Clark, who was a... To, quote Mark Ames, a frothing racist and anti-Semite and the most powerful figure in the Mormon church at the time. They founded, they named a law school at BYU after him. And the president of United Fruit. You remember United Fruit? This is the organization that Cesar Chavez back in the 60s was striking against, trying to create the American Farm Workers Union. Uh, United Farm Workers Union, rather. United Fruit, the president of uh, United, United Fruit, or Herb Corn Cornell. And as Mark Ames writes, the purpose of the fee, the, uh, the Foundation for Economic Education, and libertarianism, this new theology that they invented out of whole cloth in 1946, the purpose was to supplement big business lobbying with a pseudo-intellectual, pseudo-economic rationale to back up their policy and legislative attacks on labor and government regulations. So what this committee, what this congressional committee discovered when they investigated FEE, the Foundation for Economic Education, and they investigated the libertarian movement, it had not yet formed a political party, what they found was Milton Friedman was a paid shill working for them, and that they had just taken on this big contract for the National Association of Realtors, 
Herbert Nelson, by the way, was the chief lobbyist and executive vice president of the National Association of Real Estate Boards. He wrote, and I quote, and by the way, you will hear libertarians say this proudly, quote, I do not believe in democracy. I think it stinks. I don't think anyone except direct taxpayers should be allowed to vote. I don't believe women should be allowed to vote at all. Ever since they started, our public affairs have been a worse mess than ever, ever since women started voting. Now, you may remember this is a sentiment that was uh, fairly closely shared recently by a billionaire who was on Ron Paul's campaign in 2012. So the libertarians haven't changed much over the years. They've always just been basically a front for big business. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 866-987-THOM. As John Kenneth Galbraith said, the modern conservative is engaged in one of man's oldest exercises in moral philosophy. That is the search for a superior moral justification for selfishness.